Good morning, it is Jane with Scraptastic Yarns, and today's Bible reading comes from 1 Kings 3 through 4. Um, we are reading from the English Standard Version, and I am using the Blue Letter Bible reading plan for the year. We did get a little off track, but we're back on track. Um, we'll just continue each day as we go. All right, let's open up with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today thanking you, giving you praise for everything around us that surrounds us, Lord. We ask, Lord, that those who are hurting and who are suffering are given peace and joy in their suffering, in their afflictions, Lord. We know many times we don't understand what happens as we're going through daily life and why some are afflicted with severe things more than others, but Lord, we know that your purpose has a plan and we know oftentimes that our plans are not the same as your plans. So Lord, let us accept that your plan is what's good and right for our lives, that it brings something to the table for those around us, either to bring them to your glory or to teach them of faithfulness to you. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Solomon's Prayer for Wisdom. Sometimes I think we should often pray each day for wisdom. <laughs> Solomon made a marriage alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had finished building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall around Jerusalem. The people were sacrificing at the high places. However, because no house had yet been built, for the name of the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed and made offerings at the high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, Lord, O oh my God, you have made your servant king in place of David, my father although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself an understanding to discern what is right. Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you have, has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. Then two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. The one woman said, O oh my Lord, this woman and I live in the same house, and I gave birth to a child while she was in the house. Then on the third day after I gave birth, this woman also gave birth, and we were alone. There was no one else with us in the house, only we two were in the house. 
And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while your servant slept and laid him at her breast and laid her dead son at my breast. When I rose in the morning to nurse my child, behold, he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning, behold, he was not the child that I had borne. But the other woman said, No, the living child is mine and the dead child is yours. The first said, No, the dead child is yours and the living child is mine. Thus they spoke before the king. Then the king said, the one says, This is my son that is alive, and your son is dead. And the other says, No, but your son is dead, and my son is the living one. And the king said, Bring me a sword. So a sword was brought before the king, and the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to one and half to the other. Then the woman whose son was alive said to the king, Because her heart yearned for her son, O oh, my lord, give her the living child, and by no means put him to death. But the other said, He shall be neither mine nor yours. Divide him. Then the king answered and said, Give the living child to the first woman, and by no means put him to death. She is his mother. And all Israel heard of the judgment, for the king had rendered. And they stood in awe of the king, because they perceived that the wisdom of God was in him to do justice. King Solomon was king over all Israel, and these were his high officials. Azariah, the son of Zadok, was the priest, Elihoreph and Ahijah, the sons of Shisha, were secretaries. Jehoshaphat, the son of Alihud, was recorder. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was in command of the army. Zadok and Abiathar were priests. Azariah, the son of Nathan, was over the officers. Zabad, the son of Nathan, was a priest and king's friend. Ahishar was in charge of the palace. Adoniram, the son of Abda, was in charge of forced labor. Solomon had twelve officers over Israel, over all Israel, who provided food for the king and his household. Each man had to make provision for one month in a year. These were their names. Ben Hur in the king in the hill country of Ephraim, Ben Dekar in Machaz, Shalbim, Beth, Beth Shemesh, and Elabeth Hanan, Ben Heshed in Araboth, to him belong Sakath, and in the land of Hefer, Ben Abinadab in all Naphtaph Dor, he had Tephaf, Tephaf the daughter of Solomon as his wife, Bana, the son of Ahilud, in Takna, Megiddo, and all Beth Shean that was in, that is beside Zarethan, below Jezreel, and from Beth Shean to Abel Meholah, as far as the other side of Jokmim. Ben Geber, in Ramah Gilead, he had the villages of Jair, the son of Manasseh which are in Gilead, and he had the region of Argob, which is in Bashan, sixty great cities with walls and bronze bars. Ahinadab, the son of Edo, in Mahanaim. Ahimaz, in Naphtali, he had taken Basma, the daughter of Solomon, as his wife. Bana, the son of Hushai, in Asher, in Bilah. Jehoshaphat, the son of Peru, in Ishakar. Shemai the son of Elah in Benjamin, Geber the son of Uri in the land of Gilead, the country of Sihon king of the Amorites, and of Og king of Bashan. And there was one governor who was over the land. Judah and Israel were as many as the sand by the sea. They ate and drank and were happy. Solomon ruled over the kingdoms from the Euphrates to the land of the Philistines and to the border of Egypt. They brought tribute and served Solomon all the days of his life. Solomon's provision for one day was thirty cores of fine flour and sixty cores of meal, ten fat oxen and twenty pasture-fed cattle, a hundred sheep besides deer, gazelles, roebucks, and fattened fowl. For he had dominion over all the region west of the Euphrates, from 
Tifshah to Gaza over all the kings west of the Euphrates, and he had peace on all sides around him. And Judah and Israel lived in safety from Dan even to Beersheba, every man under his vine and under his fig tree, all the days of Solomon. Solomon also had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. And those officers supplied provisions for King Solomon and for all who came to King Solomon's table, each one in his month. They let nothing be lacking. Barley also and straw for the horses and swift steeds they brought to the place where it was required each according to his duty. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding beyond measure and a breadth of mind like, a, like the sand on the seashore so that Solomon's wisdom surpassed the wisdom of all the people of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all other men wiser than Ethan the Ezrite, and Heman, Kalkal, Kal and Darda, the sons of Mahal, and his fame was all in the surrounding nations. He also spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. He spoke of trees from the cedar that is in Lebanon to the hyssop that grows out of the wall. He spoke also of bee also of beasts and of birds and of reptiles and of fish. And people of all nations came to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all the kings of the earth who had heard of his wisdom. And that is it for today's Bible reading. As always, go out there and be a blessing to others. Be kind to one another, love one another, and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye.